Hello and welcome back to Aviation Avi. Go where you feel the most alive. Today we'll be learning about the query codes QNH, QFE, QNE, which are most commonly used in aviation. And we will also understand how height, altitude, and flight levels are different and how they are used. So let's get started. To start with, height, altitude and flight level of an aircraft from a datum which may be the ground or the mean sea level is obtained in an aircraft using an altimeter. There are three types of altimeters which is the barometric altimeter which works by measuring the pressure differential between the set datum and the vertical position where the aircraft is. The second that is the radio altimeter which works by measuring the time the radio wave takes to move out from the aircraft, hit the datum and come back to the receiver in the aircraft. And the third is the GNSS altimeter which works based on the global positioning system. But here we will try to understand the barometric altimeter and the datum set that are using the QNH, QFE and the QNE. The very basis of barometric altimeter is how pressure varies with altitude. As in the image, you can see that as we go above this level of the sea, the density of the molecules reduces and thus the pressure felt closer to the sea level is more than that the pressure felt high or at a greater distance vertically from the sea level. So, an altimeter works by measuring air pressure utilizing the fact that the air pressure of the atmosphere decreases by approximately 1 millibar for each 10 meters increase in height. The barometric altimeter. A barometric altimeter determines vertical distance of an aircraft by interpreting the difference in air pressure at current location from the set datum. So this is what inside a typical barometric altimeter looks like. This is a static port which feeds in the pressure of the current location of the aircraft into the system. And these are the aneroid wafers which is nothing but a capsule-like structure inside which pressure in relation to a particular datum is fed. This feeding is done through this adjustment knob here and the display of this datum is seen in the Coltsman window here. The datum can be set in inches of mercury, maybe millimeters of mercury or also in hectopascal. So as in the image here, let us consider our datum is 28.5 inches of mercury. Thus, the inner walls of this aneroid wafer or the capsule feel the pressure in relation to 28.5 inches of mercury. Whereas the outside walls of this capsule feel the pressure that is fed in by the static port. So as you can understand, if the pressure outside the capsule is more than what it is inside, the capsule shrinks. And if the pressure inside the capsule is greater than that outside, the capsule expands. This in turn results in the rotation of the gears here which further moves the needles of the barometric altimeter which indicate the vertical position of the aircraft in relation to the set data. We will learn how to read these needles in the further flight and determine the vertical position of the aircraft. As you must have observed that I was mentioning the term vertical distance and not any other term because the vertical distance can be expressed using altitude, height, and elevation. So let's understand the difference between these. The altitude is the vertical distance of an object as measured from the mean sea level. So the vertical distance of the aircraft in relation to the mean sea level is the altitude here. Further, height is the vertical distance of an object as measured from a specific datum. So let's consider the datum here is the ground level the vertical position of the aircraft in relation to this ground here is the height of the aircraft. The elevation is the vertical distance of a location on the surface of the earth from the specified mean sea level. So, 
the datum that was set for determining height is also at a particular vertical distance from the mean sea level. So that vertical distance is known as the elevation of that surface or the ground. Now we are all set to understand QNH, QFP and QNE. QNH is nothing but the pressure at mean sea level. Now since QNH varies from one location to another based on atmospheric conditions, there is an internationally recognized datum for determining the vertical positioning of the aircraft which is known as flight level when determined with respect to QNH or the internationally set datum that is 1013.2 hectopascal. So this QNE is 1013.2 hectopascal which is the globally recognized pressure datum and QFE is nothing but the pressure at ground level. When QNH is the pressure datum set in the altimeter of the aircraft, the altimeter reads the altitude of the aircraft which is the vertical positioning above the mean sea level. Further, if QFE is the altimeter pressure datum, then the altimeter reads the height of the aircraft above the ground. Suppose the aircraft is placed on the ground and the pressure datum in the altimeter is QFE. So it is obvious that the altimeter will read the vertical distance or the height to be zero because there is no difference in pressure of QFE and the pressure that is being fed by the static port. If QNE is the pressure datum set in the altimeter, then the altimeter reads nothing but the flight level of the aircraft that is with respect to 1013.25 hectopascal or 29.92 inches of mercury. So here we understood that whenever the vertical positioning of the aircraft is mentioned with respect to QNE, it is the flight level of the aircraft we are talking about. Now that we have understood QNH, QAP and QNE, it is time that we understand how they are used by the pilots. First things first, we must know that the elevation of any point on the ground or that of the obstacles is always mentioned with respect to the mean sea level. Thus, it is very much logical that when the aircraft is close to the aerodrome environs, the altimeter pressure datum that is set by the pilot is that of the local QNH, which is given by the ATC to the pilot during taxi clearance. This is so that the pilot of the aircraft navigates safely above the obstacles that are present close to the aerodrome. Now, as the aircraft climbs and moves away from the aerodrome environs towards a location where the local QNH may differ, there may rise an ambiguity. Let us understand this with an example. Suppose an aircraft comes in from two different locations, location A and location B, where the local QNH is different because of the atmospheric conditions at these two locations. So as these two aircrafts come towards each other, altimeter reading may give different vertical distance of these two aircrafts with respect to their local QNH at location A and B respectively, whereas they may actually be at the same altitude and they may be head on with each other. So to avoid such kind of ambiguity, there are defined levels at which the aircraft must switch over from QNH to QNE. As the aircraft reaches the transition altitude, the pilot switches over from QNH to QNE. Thus, above the transition altitude, the vertical position of the aircraft is mentioned in flight level and below this, the vertical position of the aircraft is mentioned in altitude for a departing aircraft. Now, let us consider the situation where an aircraft is flying with respect to flight levels and it descends. As it comes closer and closer to the aerodrome, it is logical that the pilot must switch over from the globally determined pressure datum that is QNE to QNH. And this takes place at the transition level. As the aircraft reaches the transition level, the pilot of the aircraft switches over from QNE to QNH. Thus, below transition level, the pilot of the aircraft reports its vertical position in altitude and the layer between the transition level 
and the transition altitude is the transition layer. Here the ATC must be extra vigilant to avoid any collision between two aircraft because here the changing over of the pressure datum takes place and there is high chance that there can be an accident or incident which can be avoided by maintaining radial separation or lateral separation between two aircrafts. Now to the bonus slide where we understand how to read the altimeter. Basically there are three needles in the barometric altimeter. Looking at the first one is the needle with a triangular head on top. This gives the reading in 10,000 feet. Next is the longer needle, longer needle which gives you the reading in thousands of feet and then the short needle which gives the reading in 100 feet. So let us try to understand this with an example. Let us try to find out the reading of this altimeter first. The first hand that is the long needle with a triangular head gives the reading in 10,000 feet. So whatever the reading is, we multiply it by 10,000. As we can see that this needle is pointing at 1. So the reading that this needle is given is 1 into 10,000 feet, that is 10,000 feet. Next, the longer needle has crossed 1 but has not reached 2. So we take the reading as 1 into 1,000 feet, that is 1,000 feet. The shorter needle here has crossed 0 and is pointing towards the first division between 0 and 1. Since the shorter needle gives reading in 100 of feet, so there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divisions between 0 and 1. So each division between 0 and 1 is 20 feet. Thus, as it is pointing towards the first division, this needle is giving you the reading of 20 feet. So our final answer is 10,000 plus 1,000 plus 20, that is 11,020 feet. Further, let us look at this example. Here the long needle with a triangular head has crossed 7 but has not reached 8. So the reading of this needle is 7 into 10,000 that is 70,000 feet plus the longer needle has crossed 1 but not reached 2. So the reading is 1 into 1000 that is 1000 feet. Now the short needle has crossed 2 but not reached 3 and it is pointing towards the fourth division between 2 and 3 because it has crossed 2 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 that is 280 feet. So the short needle is showing 280 feet. So the total reading is 70,000 plus 1,000 plus 280 that is 71,280 feet. So hope we are clear with how to read an altimeter. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do visit our website aviationavi.com. Do like, share and subscribe because your support is our motivation. And if you want to reach out to us for any doubt, do visit our LinkedIn profile the link of which is given in the description or you can also comment here and let us know what videos you'd like to watch further. Thank you.